Hi, this is Miss Lee, and today we're going to talk about measures of central tendency. So a measure of the center of a set of data is a single number that is used to describe the set of numeric data. A measure of center describes a typical value from the data set, and there are three measures of central tendency. The first is the mean, the second measure is the median, and then the third is the mode. You probably have heard of these, mean, median, and mode. So we're going to look at each one individually and how to find each one. The first measure is finding the mean. The mean is the value that represents an even distribution of the data, also called the average. And we use this all the time every day in school. A lot of times you come up to me, hey, Miss Lee, what's my grade? And what you're really asking me is what is your the average of all of your math grades put together? This average is what goes on your progress reports and your report cards. The average is where it's a shared distribution. You're sharing it, how much will each person get, everybody has the same amount, and we use the mean to describe data when the data does not have an outlier. Well, what's an outlier? An, oops, an outlier is a number in the data set that is much smaller or larger than the rest of the numbers. So for example, 1, 3, 5, 25, 7, 10. You can see that 25 is quite a bit larger than the rest of the numbers. So 25 is what we would consider an outlier. And because it's so much larger, or it could be a lot smaller, it will affect the mean. So therefore, if there is an outlier, the mean is not the way we would go. But if there's not an outlier, the mean is, is perfect for representing the median or the center of your data. So how do we find the mean? You just add them up and then divide. So if we have four test results, 15, 18, 22, and 20, and we want to know what our average is, we just add them up. 15 plus 18 plus 22 plus 20 gives us 75. And then you divide by the number of data that are in your set. There are four pieces of data, so we would divide the 75 by 4, and we would get 18.75, or 18 and 75 hundredths. So the mean, or the average, of the test results is 18 and 75 hundredths. Let's try another one. Dave counted the number of times people sharpened their pencils in class for a week. He counted 4, 13, 4, 2, 14, and 11. What is the mean number of pen people who sharpen their pencils? How do we find the mean again? We add them up and then divide. So I'm going to make this a little bit easier. I'm going to add up all of my 4's, so that's an 8 plus 2 makes 10, 10 plus 13 is 23, 23 plus 14, you can do the math off to the side if you want to, would be 37, and 37 plus 11 would be 48. So we added them up and we got 48. Now we want to divide by the number of data that are in our set. Well, how many numbers were in there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we would divide 48 by 6, and that would give us 8. So 8 people would be the mean. Now let's talk about the mode. The mode is the value that occurs the most. And we use the mode to describe data when choosing the most popular response. You know, hey, how many times or what is the grade that you receive the most? Okay, so in this example, 80, 85, 90, 90, and 100, the mode would be 90 because it appears more than any, any of the other numbers. Okay, there are two 90s. There's only 180, 185, and 100. So the mode, the one that appears the most, would be 90. Now, what happens if I do this? If I add a 100? 
Well, now you would have two moats. You would have the 90, and you would also have the 100, because they both appear more than the 80 and the 85, and they both appear twice. So the mode, there would be two modes, and it's okay to have two modes. You would just say 90 and 100. What if I did this, though? What if I added another 100? Then what would the mode become? It would no longer be 90. Instead, it would be 100 because there are three hundreds. And 100 appears more times than any of the other numbers. Now, let me change it up a little bit more. What if I changed this 90 right here to 190? Then what is the mode? Well, they all appear the same amount of times, don't they? They all appear once. So there would be no mode. Now, a lot of students make the mistake of saying, oh, the mode is zero, and they put zero. But zero is a numerical piece of data, and by putting zero, you're saying that zero appears more times than anything else, and you can't say that. So that if there is no mode, you say no mode. Dave counted the number of times people sharpened their pencils in class for a week. He counted 4, 13, 4, 2, 14, and 11. What is the mode of the number of people who sharpen their pencils? Mode means the one that appears the most. Well, taking a look at your data, you could see that the mode is 4. 4 appears twice. All of the other numbers appear only once. You can also find the mode from a graph. What is the mode number of pizza slices sold? Well, this gives you the restaurant down at the bottom on the x-axis. The y tells you the number of slices sold. And this is a bar graph, so this one's pretty easy. You look for the bars that appear the most or have the same height. And in this case, it's going to be at 80. You could also, on this bar graph or any other graphs, write the numbers. This one appears 80, this one is also 80, this one is 80, 90, 70, 70, 80, and 90. And you can see that 80 appears the most, so 80 is the mode. Finding the median. When ordered from least to greatest, the median is the middle number. Median means middle. And we use the median to describe our data when the data has an outlier or it's not spread out evenly. So here's our set of data. We want to find the median. So first thing you do is you order them from least to greatest. You have to put them in order from the smallest number to the largest number. Once you have them in order, there's a couple of different ways you can find this. You can cross out a low, cross out a high, cross out the next low, the next high, and keep going until you have the middle number, where you're left with just one number, which is 64. So 64 would be the median. The other way you can do it is you can count how many numbers are in your data set. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are 9 numbers, and when I divide 9 by 2, I get 4. So that means I'm going to have four pieces of data on the low side, and I'm going to have four pieces of data on the high side, and the number that's left in the middle is the median. What is the median number of ice cream cones sold? Well, you could do this a couple of different ways because it is with a graph you can use the graph itself and cross out the low and the highs. So the lows would be the shortest bars. So this is a low, so I can cross this one off. The high would be the longer bars, so this is a high. Find another low, find another high, find another low, find another high, and you're left with Sunday, which is at 70. You could also go and find the values of each bar. Here we have an 80, 
this one is 60, the 70, 60, 80, 80, and 60, and you can order them from least to greatest. And then from there, you can find the middle number. So I'm going to count. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven pieces of data. And when I divide that by two, it only goes in equally three times. So that means there's going to be three pieces of data on the low side, three pieces of data on the high side, and the number in the middle is the median. Now, let's talk a little bit more about this. What if I had a 90? And I want to find the median. Well, now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now I have eight pieces of data. And when I divide that by two, it goes in equally four times. So that means there's four pieces of data on the lower half. And there are four pieces of data on the upper half. And look what happens. There's no number in the middle. What that means is you have to take the median of the two middle pieces of number. Or or the mean of the two middle pieces of number. So the two middle pieces of data are 70 and 80. So you add them up. 70 plus 80 equals 150. And then you divide that 150 by 2. And you get 75. So the median would be 75. OK, so let's go over that again. If you have an even number of data in your data set, then you're going to have to find the mean of the two middle numbers. So I, divide, I wanted to split my set into two, to a lower half and upper half. When I did that, I had no number in the middle. So instead, the 70 and the 80 are the two numbers in the middle. So I can find the mean of, this, of the 70 and 80. 70 plus 80 is 150. Divide that by 2, and I get 75. 75 is the median. You could also think of it as a number line. Here's my 70. Here's my 80. What's going to be exactly in the middle of 70 and 80? And it would be 75. OK, let's talk about range. Now, although range is not a measure of the center, it does describe the spread of the data. So to find the range, all you do is take the high number minus the low number. So in the set of the data, you look for the highest number, which is 94. And you look for the lowest number, which is 73. And you subtract. 94 minus 73 is 21. So the range would be 21. You could do the same thing from a graph. Okay, Find the highest number and the lowest number. The highest would be 80. The lowest number would be at Sunday, which is 10. And you subtract the two. 80 minus 10 equals 70. That is the range. And that's all there is to know about measures of center.